Welcome back. Before we get into changing the oil on this bike, I wanted to mention a couple things. To preserve the integrity of our runs, I'm not even going to unstrap the bike from the dyno because we're getting really consistent runs right now. We like that. So moving it off and moving it back on, you could lose some of that consistency. We've got a little contraption that um, we use here to allow it to drain. Um, but one of the things I wanted to show you, if you can pan down here to the oil level with the bike strapped on the dyno, it's actually above the full mark. So um, we're going to target somewhere in the low mark initially with the uh, Allison less than zero. And to give us room to add an additive we also use, which is called Pestron Plus, but we'll get to that later. Um, listen to the voice of experience. <laughs> Take your key out, take you some painter's tape, we use a lot of painter's tape, right? Strap it over top of your ignition switch and put in great big letters, no oil. No, no, no. The last thing in the world you want to do is start your motorcycle with no oil in it. So what do we do with the keys? We take them out of the room and we hide them. Don't put them in your pocket. You can unconsciously just walk up and put your bike head, you know, maybe your head's in someplace else. We're gonna move these and we're gonna take them out of the dyno room and I'm gonna go set them in a cabinet um, so that there's absolutely no way that me or anyone else can turn the key on that bike and start it. I'll be right back. All right, done. Um, the other thing I want to mention, we're going to install an OEM Suzuki oil filter. Now, we're never the kind of place that's going to bash on anybody else's product, so I'll just say this. In my lifetime of changing oil in motorcycles, I have never, never, not once had an OEM filter not flow. Unfortunately, in the beginning, I use some aftermarket filters, and how do you find out that an aftermarket filter doesn't work or isn't flowing oil? When you fire up your bike, your oil pressure light's on, and it doesn't go out. Just don't even take the chance. We don't. Um, we use OEM for a reason. They're tested by the factory, the same people that made the motorcycle. They really know what they're doing. So enough of that. We're going to get the oil out of here and then uh, make some dyno runs and see where we're at. little bit of debris on there but nothing to be worried about for sure we'll wipe that off just metal this it's a metal or a magnetic drain plug so it's just picking off whatever little bit of metal shavings may be coming off the gears transmissions things of that nature Now you can see a little bit of shiny in the oil. That's normal. We don't see any. Um, we don't see any brass. There's some. There's some small pieces here, especially with a brand new engine. You're going to see that. So this looks very good.
can smell clutch in this oil and also smell the MR12 because you will get MR12 past the ring so it's important to change your oil more often when you run the oxygenated fuels. Now what reason we put it into this other pan is the same thing. If we look in here there's no there's no debris there's no trouble. Um, don't see any clutch because we've been on the dyno so this is what we're expecting to see with a 300, 400, 500 mile motorcycle. We really don't know what it is since the odometer doesn't work on the dyno. But everything looks good. Another thing, when it comes to drain plugs, they're either out or they're <coughs> installed and tight enough not to come loose. So I'm gonna go get my torque wrench, um, but for now, I'm going to put this oil plug back in and make sure that it is plenty tight not to come out and then we'll check that. We'll double check that with the torque wrench here in a minute. All right, 17 foot pounds. Put the oil in here. <clears throat> Using Allison Pro Drive 21. It's a less than zero weight. I've been using it since, holy cow, the late 1990s. Almost every motorcycle I have, well, every motorcycle I have with a stock engine doesn't use anything but this. It's really good stuff. So all we're going to try and do is fill it to the low level in the window, which should take about three quarts approximately. I get asked all the time well, too, is this okay for the street? Um, one of my former crewmen had a 2005 GSXR 1100 that had, well, it's got 20,000 miles on it now, and it's never had anything but less than zero and Petron. Um, he drag raced it. He did track days with it. He rode it everywhere. Um, so our climate here in Ohio gets a little bit hot in the summer. Um, we go up to the next weight, which is a, um, a 0 20. If we get in a, in a situation where it's very, very hot outside, you know, Texas, South Florida, places of that nature. Or if you're just afraid to use the zero weight, go with the zero 20. I run 1030 in my Harley Davidson. And it's, they claim you need 50 weight. And uh, you can check this out on our site too. The late Bill Warner, Land Speed Racer, had a Hayabusa with a thousand horsepower. He ran zero 20 Allison in it. There's a, a thicker is better mentality that just makes people feel better, but today's lubricants, they just don't have to be thick like they used to be. And they give great performance and engine life and protect your engine. My wife's Lexus takes 520. <laughs> and it's gonna go a bunch of miles. All right, we're getting very close one nice thing about having the bike strapped on the dyno, it's upright. So that put it to the middle of the window. Of course, we haven't started it yet, so it should drop back down. All right. So 15 foot-pounds on the oil filter, and I apologize. I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't show us filling the, the oil filter first. You fill it, fill it with oil rub a little bit of the motor oil around the seal and then put it in there. It makes a hell of a mess and I cleaned it all up but now we got everything torqued and we're ready to go. Aha! Back from the hiding spot. Now we can remove the tape, put the key back in and then what we're going to do is start the bike 
and make sure that the oil pressure light goes out within seconds. And if it doesn't, we're going to turn it back off. So watch right over here. That was instant. And a lot of reason that it was was because we put oil in the filter. If you don't put oil in the filter, you put an air cavity in there and that oil pressure light can stay on long enough to make you very uncomfortable. We filled our engine up to the low level. That's, it's a little tough to get to, but a little bit above the low. But we know we've got room to add 12 ounces of Petron here. Now, why Petron? You know, the Allison has a great additive package. Why would we use this? Um, I mean, this stuff's insurance. I could tell you stories <laughs> about going down the racetrack without any oil in the bike. Too long. You don't want to hear it. Just, uh, <laughs> there's a reason we've been using Petron for so many years. Um, the stuff really works. There's no doubt about it. Now, you notice I'm just shaking and shaking and shaking, right? Um, it's got zinc in it. It's also got some other solids in it that treat the metal. So if you just dump it in, first of all, you have to shake it to get everything um, broken loose inside the bottle. But if you just dump it in and you don't go for a ride, the solids can go straight down to the bottom of the oil pan and then they can't get through your engine. So what we do, we shake, 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 shake the heck out of this stuff. And then as soon as we put it in, we're going to start the bike um, and immediately go for a ride. That's the best way to do it. Uh, if you start the bike and let it idle in the garage for five minutes, that's fine also. Um, but whatever happens, you, you need to put it in and start the bike. And also, for the guys that are wondering, see how thick this is? When you put Petron in, um, the less than zero, the actual viscosity goes up to about a straight 10 weight. So it's not as scary for some people. Um, I just like it because we typically see a reduction in friction and a, uh, you know, one of the problems is trying to keep a clutch in a modern, in a modern sport bike. This does a fantastic job. Um, it's about the only way we can keep a clutch in a BMW is this stuff, this combination. Works fantastic. It'll take a tremendous amount of heat and you don't, um, you don't tear up your, your friction. So um, just to show you how crazy we are, I mean, we're going to start it right now. And just let it idle and then I'm going to go and take it for a ride. Typically, it takes about 10 miles before you'll see any kind of difference. So we'll ride it for a while. Uh, horsepower difference. We'll ride it for a while and uh, then make some runs and see what we get. Check out our results here and when we say the devil's in the details I mean look at the difference here in the peak power between the Allison less than zero weight and Petron and the mystery Suzuki oil that was in there uh, we can also look in the over rev there's a bigger gap which is pretty nice um, 
one and three quarter, almost two horsepower. Then get a couple more gaps up the curve, a horsepower or so. So what does this tell us? Well, first thing it tells us is whatever oil was in there was not made of oatmeal. <laughs> that was really good stuff. And uh, we see this every once in a while. Like I said, the, um, some of the modern, the modern motor oils, and especially from your OEM, Kawasaki's 1040 is fantastic. It's a great oil. The oil that was in this, whatever it was, whether it was a semi-synthetic or a synthetic, um, it was relatively thin. We had quite a few miles on it, which may have thinned it down. But it was, it was, man, it was good oil. So if you're worried about your warranty, if you're worried about running thinner oil, if you're worried about any of that stuff, run the oil from your dealership that matches this motorcycle, uh, the Suzuki motor oil. We're synthetic oil fans ourselves. Uh, like I said, we really like it with the clutch, but um, especially, and when we talk about clutch, this is all drag racing. We don't, road racing, you know, we don't have nearly as many problems except after the start. So, where next? Where are we gonna go? We are squeaking up at 204 horsepower. We are still on MR12. That's a great number, but I also want to remind you guys that if you go back to our conditions video, um, the dyno room got relatively hot because we were dyno in here, in here quite a bit, but the humidity is only 17%. So will this bike make 204 in the springtime? Well, set up exactly how it is. No, it can't. It's gonna be fairly close. So the one thing is for sure, now when we put this bike on the dyno, it starts off with 200 horsepower and it builds up to, you know, 200 and something, which is really nice. I believe where we're gonna go from here, there's, there's a couple different directions. Um, we can get a little bit more into the ECU there. Uh, and I know there are a lot of guys that, that wanna see the bike tuned with just the ECU. So we can show you that, um, boy. We've got wheels to put on, um, auto blipper, which I think is something people might like. Um, turn your S model into a, a standard model into an R model. We're working on that. We're working on all kinds of things. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it a little bit open-ended depending on what works best for our next schedule. But we promise it won't be too long and we'll get to it and we'll show you when we do. I'm Brock from Brock's Performance. Stock to Brock. We'll see you next time.